Oh, Wyman, what a pick. Wolfgang to the hoop. And there is the point for Team Hammond. Let's go! What's up, you guys, here in the Bahamas? You just saw that insane B-roll. Yes, I did play uh, basketball with Tony Parker and Sergio Aguero, but now we have an exciting video. The poker is about to get started. Day two of the mini main event starts now. I have 426K chips, average is 250K, and the top four places all get six figures, with first place getting over $300,000. The action starts now. Let's get right into the hands. Let's go! Start with 36 big blinds in our stack. Fellow degenerate Ryan DePaulo raises the plus one. We're at the 6K, 12K, 12K blind level. I decide to put in the call with pocket fours from the button, taking us to a flop, which comes jack, five, four, bang, we flop bottom set. On a monotone board, Ryan decides to start with a check, and I'm not gonna let it get checked through in case he has a strong heart in his hand. I fire out for 25K and he puts in the call. The turn is not a welcome sight, it's the nine of hearts, and he checks it over to me once again. We have a decision between betting and checking. I think most of the time I would check behind in this spot. Given the fact I have a set, I don't wanna get blown off my hand. For instance, if I bet here and then he raises me, we're in a tough spot. However, that's actually what I decide to do. I'm looking to get to a cheap shutdown here. I want to bet on the turn. I want to get called. Him check to me, and then I check behind and scoop the pot. And it looks like the first part of that plan is going to work out nicely here. He puts in the call, and the river comes the three of diamonds. Doesn't change anything, so when he checks over to me, we're going to stick to that plan and check behind. He turns over top pair, top kicker. Gives me the bird when I turn over pocket fours. We're taking down that first hand of the night. What a degenerate. Calling with four hearts and no heart in your hand? Jeez. The blind levels go up fast here at the WSOP Paradise. It's now 10k, 20k, 20k, and we look down at king-queen offsuit from middle position. I make it 40k to go, and for those of you that don't play many tournaments, the 2x raise size is very standard. You don't want to commit too much of your chips before seeing what other players do. So king-queen offsuit, obviously a great hand. We're going to come in for a raise, but now we're faced with a jam from the low jack for less than 20 big blinds. When the action folds back around to me, we're in an interesting spot. In tournaments, you really want to be the one shoving your chips in the middle and not calling off jams unless you have a premium hand. King-Queen offsuit is a good hand to raise. I'm not too sure if it's good enough to call here, so I make a tight fold. Don't want to risk all my chips on a flip here if he's just shoving with 9s or 10s. I'd rather get it through with a jam than call it off here and be wrong. That same concept of ICM laddering up and trying to stay alive in tournaments comes very apparent in this next hand here. I look down at 10-7 of diamonds from the big blind. The cutoff raises it up to 40k. I put in the call and we're going off to a flop, which definitely prefers the cutoff's range over mine. Ace-queen-10 with one diamond. I check it over to him. He bets out small for 30k. And I think he's allowed to go small here considering he's going to have all of the sets, two pairs, straights, all of that good stuff, and I shouldn't have too much of it. However, with bottom pair and a backdoor flush draw, I decide to put in the call here given the insane price, and off to the turn we go. Hopefully, it helps me out. The turn does in fact help me out. It comes the five of diamonds and I check it over to the cutoff once again. Would really love to see a check behind here and let me get to the river, which hopefully is a diamond 10 or a seven, which would give me the best hand. However, now the opponent bets out for 108K, not exactly sure why he chose that specific sizing, but 108K into the 200K pot is a big amount of my remaining chips. Sure, I picked up equity on the turn, which was the goal of calling the flop bet, but let's not forget how small that flop bet was, so it wouldn't be a huge mistake here to fold our chips. Let's do some quick math to see if we're getting the right price to call. Let's assume that the opponent has an ace or a queen, just something over our pair of 10s. So if we want to hit a 7, we have 3 outs there. Any 10 would be 2 outs, and any diamond would be an additional 9 outs. So we have 14 outs, and usually with one card to go, you're just going to multiply it by 2 to get a rough estimate. We have around 28% chance to win this hand if those are our only outs. Now that 28% chance is to win the hand if we were to hit one of those cards. However, now we need to think about the pot size. It's 308k in the middle and it's 108k for me to call, which means we're getting roughly 2.9 to 1. What does that mean? We need about 26% equity to put in the call. And as you know from before, we have 28%. So just on math, 
this could be a call. But if we think about it, what if he has ace queen? Now our sevens aren't live and the math becomes skewed towards folding. One thing you also have to consider in tournaments is this thing called ICM which means that uh, as you get later in the tournaments, each chip is worth incrementally more because you're getting close to the money. So getting your stack in here on a draw is not a good ICM move, especially because we are looking to bag and tag, get to the next day, lock up a small profit here, and then try to make a move on day two. At the end of the day, this could be a call, this could be a fold. I decided to go with the more conservative route, fold my cards here, and expecting him not to bet on the turn with anything less than top pair. Was this a good fold? Was this a bad one? Did you appreciate that little math class we just went through? Let me know down in the comments. Let's move right into the next one. We have 16 big blinds and jack six of spades from the small blind. Limping the small blind is a strategy in tournaments I put in the call, and now we got Bruno on our left in the big blind who checks his option. On a king 10 10 board, I start with a check and the Argentine checks behind. The queen of spades peels off on the turn, which is a great card for us without directly improving our hand. We have an open-ended straight draw plus the flush draw. Given the fact he checked behind on the flop, I don't think he's going to do it too often with any of his 10s. Sure, he might want to trap a small portion of the time, but most likely he just has some ace highs, some queen highs that maybe made a pair now on the turn. So I'm going to start with a bet here for 20k, try to get all of his under pairs to fold like pocket fours and pocket fives, some of his ace highs as well. That would be a huge win for myself. Bruno puts in the call though on the turn, but no fear, the three of hearts on the river comes, and uh, we're going to continue the story that we have a 10, king, queen, and try to get all of his non-believing ace highs, like ace five of spades, ace nine of spades, we got to get those to fold, so I fire out for 80 bucks. Additionally, if he can somehow fold a queen here, that would be a massive win. I don't think he's ever folding a king or a 10, obviously, that would definitely come in for a raise, but if we can get ace highs and queens to fold, massive win here, and let's go for the bluff. 80k is the bet. He doesn't love it. He thinks about it for around 30 seconds. I really want him to fold. At this point, I know he has some sort of made hand, obviously having us beat. Eventually, though, he does put in the call. He didn't fly all the way from Argentina to fold. Queen 8 offsuit. So he made a pair on the turn, got sticky, and he's going to take down old Wolfgang here in this 260k pot. When you get short in tournaments, the only move you have is to go all in. I jam my 10 big blind stack here from the low jack at the 20k blind level. And luckily, somehow, everyone folds. So we're going to pick up 50,000 chips uncontested. And look at that. Ryan gives us that uh, smooth golf clap. More of the same in this next one. We look down at the pocket Ochos from the big blind. The button raises up to 50k. And he's going to have a super wide range here. So pocket eights is basically the nuts. I jam my 230k stack in the middle. If we can get a fold, we're just going to take down the pot right away, which is huge. However, he didn't raise the button to fold. He puts in the call, and look at that. We are flipping versus king nine of clubs. Got to win your flips if you want to make it deep in the tournament, and the flop is definitely great for us. 10-7-6 with two diamonds. We're up to an 81% chance, and that improves to 90% on the ace of hearts turn, followed by the seven of spades on the river. 508k pot coming over my way. And look at that. We are taking down a nice one here. The blinds went through us a few times. Our stack is down to 418k, which is around 17 big blinds. And the blind level is also going up to 25k, 25k. So what does that mean? Ace 10 of clubs is a jam here for 418k. And we are going to get it through once again, picking up 60k chips here. Extremely valuable, just chipping up. It's hard for people to call jams unless they have very strong hands. So hopefully this strategy is going to continue to work out for us going forward. Hall of Famer to the bucket. <laughs> Wolfgang dared to shoot. Uh, we can see why. This next one's a fun one. The villain in the cutoff jams his entire stack all in. He barely has more than me. I think he had around 450K. The action folds around to me. And what do we look down at? The ladies come through for us in the Bahamas. I'm in the small blind and decide to go all in myself. Can't be folding pocket queens in any situation, let alone when you have 12 big blinds in your stack. What are we up against? A beautiful king-queen offsuit. So he only has outs to the king and maybe some backdoor straight draws, but the ace-eight-seven board is no help to him. He does have the king of hearts in his hand, so hold your horses. But the four of spades is a crippling blow to him, followed by the jack of clubs. 
And just like that, we are doubling through an opponent up to 780k in our stack. Things have slowed down. We're at the 20k, 40k, 40k blind level. I have 505k in my stack, which means the blinds went through us a bunch of times since I just took down that 780k pot. However, under the gun makes it 110 to go. And off of 13 big blinds, I think this is a jam. Sure, his under the gun range is going to be pretty strong, but he has a lot of chips, so he could be doing this fairly wide. If I can get a fold here, that'd be massive. I'd chip up to 700k. However, if he calls, we could play a million chip pot. And if he has a pocket pair, we'd be flipping. I'm not feeling good. He verbalizes out loud that he doesn't feel good about this. And then he folds his cards. In tournaments, you guys, you never want to be all in and at risk. So jamming it all in here and him folding is a massive win. I'd prefer this 10 times out of 10 over him putting in the call, even if we were ahead of like Jack 10 or 10 9 suited. I'd rather just take down the 715k pot uncontested and move right into the next hand. We look down at Queen 10 offsuit from the small blind. When the action folds around to us off of 12 big blinds, this is just a pure shove. Have to put maximum pressure on the big blind. Chipping up is important, as I've said a few times in this video, and the big blind can't take the smoke. He folds his cards queen high, taking it down, and we're chipping up. All right, that brings us into this next hand. It's been around an hour since we played that last one, and even though the pay jumps have been going up, the blinds have been running through us. We only have 440 in our stack, which is around seven big blinds, so not great news to report. Under the gun shoves his entire stack all in, and we look down at ace six offsuit from the big blind. Now, most of the time, this is probably just a fold, but I'm looking at my chip stack. I have around seven big blinds. I'm in the big blind, which means I put that 60K out there as an ante, and also in front of me, a lot of my chips are in play. If I fold here, I might not get a better hand to go all in with in the next four or five hands. Then the blinds are gonna come through me again and uh, take another 150K off of my stack. So what do I decide to do? I decide to go all in, hoping we're up against a hand like King Queen suited, King Jack suited, Queen Jack suited, something like that. After all, the villain in Under the Gun is shoving around a 12 big blind stack, so he should be doing it fairly wide as well. However, in hindsight, after talking with a few people, I do think this is kind of a punt. Probably should just fold here and wait for a better hand, and if it doesn't come, I still can go through the blinds once or twice and get it in in a better spot. However, we still have a 28% chance to win this one, so don't count me out just yet. 10s versus A6 offsuit. We need to spike an ace or some running straight cards on the flop to give us a chance. We're down to 13% chance to win it on a queen jack four board. The turn isn't great news for us and the river seals our fate. We are knocked out of the tournament. And yeah, after a grueling two days straight of 10 hours of play on each day with dinner breaks and just the commotion and interviews and all of that good stuff, we have been knocked out of the tournament in 60th place. Let's bring it to the outro to see how we did. All right, you guys, that wraps up two full days of grinding in the mini main. We bought in for 1100 and bagged a healthy stack for day two, only to come up a little bit short. 60th place out of a few thousand people is not easy to do. But uh, yeah, 60th place is only worth 5,500 and there was a ton of money up top. So a little disappointed in myself, kind of a punt there at the end, I think maybe i don't uh call off there and i wait for a better spot i just i'm not too well versed in tournaments so i saw seven big blinds i saw an ace i thought that i might be ahead of like king queen suited king jack stuff like that and uh yeah we are out in 60th but we have a lot of fun more videos coming we're gonna play some cash games we have some more tournaments so uh a lot of things for you to subscribe and look forward to i'll catch you guys in the next video here from the bahamas and good luck on the felt as always peace Okay.